Hey, this is Carrie from Soundproofist, and I get a lot of questions about floor and ceiling noise. So what's really bothering you is impact noise. Typically, it sounds like your upstairs neighbors are stomping back and forth. They might not actually be stomping, but it sounds like it, and it might be really stressful. Most wood frame buildings have hardwood floors, or at least wooden subfloors, and the wooden subfloor is attached to wooden joists, and the joists are connected to the wooden wall framing. There's no dampening materials between all of these connections, so this forms a network of wood that transmits sound through the building frame. And wood is a great sound conductor. Think about guitars and pianos. How would they sound if they were made from a different material, like felt? So wood flooring can get pretty loud, especially if the space underneath it is hollow. But even if it's insulated, the impact noise can travel from upstairs to downstairs, and it can also go the opposite way from downstairs to upstairs. Impact noise is measured by Impact Insulation Class, and the acronym is IIC. The minimum IIC that's considered satisfactory in a residential building is 50. And the higher the IIC rating, the better. The IIC rating for hardwood floors or vinyl floors is about 47. So that doesn't quite meet the minimum satisfactory rating. For a tiled floor, it's even worse. The IIC rating is about 40. New construction has to meet modern acoustical requirements for residential buildings. So, for example, the United States uses the 2018 International Building Code for new construction. And California introduced some acoustical requirements in the 1970s under Title 24. What this means is that if your home was built before these acoustical requirements existed, the IIC is probably below the minimum requirement of 50, and impact noise is going to bother you. And even if your home was built after these requirements were established, the impact noise might bother you. So let's take a look at Section 1206 of the International Building Code. Section 1206.3 is about structure-borne sound, and this is what it says. Floor ceiling assemblies between dwelling units and sleeping units, or between a dwelling unit or a sleeping unit and a public or service unit within the structure, shall have an impact insulation class rating of not less than 50, or not less than 45 if field tested, where tested in accordance with ASTM E492. In case you're wondering, what is ASTM E492? It's a testing method that was approved in 1973, and it involves using a floor tapping machine for testing, which doesn't perfectly resemble actual humans walking back and forth. Also, there's a wide range of floor assemblies, and the measurements from these tests don't account for all the materials, construction methods, and real-world situations over the past 40 years. So let's just assume that if the minimum acceptable IIC is 50 or even 45, it's probably still not going to be acceptable if you live in an apartment that only meets the bare minimum and you have upstairs neighbors walking on uncarpeted floors. The most effective way to block noise is at the source, before it gets into the building frame. So let's start with step one. Talk to your neighbors. If you're lucky, they'll understand. Then you can move on to discussing solutions. If they're not receptive, you have a challenge. They might not believe you. They're probably just doing everyday things and they don't realize how noise can travel. They're not thinking about IIC and they might feel like their rights are being infringed on. They don't want any interference in their lifestyle. So, on to step two. Try an easy solution first. Ask your neighbor to put down some carpeting with a thick underlayment in their walking paths. A lot of apartment associations require carpeting anyway. A thick carpet can potentially increase your floor's IIC up to 75. Sometimes that's the end of it. The issue improves. But let's say the carpeting doesn't make much of a difference, and you still hear a toddler running back and forth every day. So, on to step three you might need to consider a construction option. So the least destructive option at the source is to add another layer of flooring on top of the existing floor. It's called a floating floor. This is certainly easier than demolishing the upstairs floor all the way down to the joist and rebuilding it with decoupling materials. 
though that really might be more effective. A floating floor gets installed on top of an existing floor without nailing it into the flooring below it. The planks snap together with a click lock system. You don't tear out the existing hardwood floor underneath it, you put the new floor on top of it. The floating floor has a sound absorbing underlayment made of foam or cork. This will help to absorb footfalls, and the floating floor shouldn't touch the walls, leave a gap around the edges for expansion and contraction. However, if your neighbors don't want to put a rug in their apartment, they're probably not going to be interested in installing a floating floor. That leaves you with another option that you can control. You can mitigate some of the noise from inside your own apartment. It will also require some demolition and reconstruction. And this involves removing your existing ceiling and building a new ceiling that's decoupled from the floor joists. This decoupled ceiling separates the drywall of your ceiling from your upstairs neighbor's floor by mounting the drywall onto sound isolation clips instead of screwing the drywall directly into the joist, which is what's happening right now. And if you do this, you should also add insulation and other materials like maybe mass-loaded vinyl inside the ceiling cavity to absorb or block as much sound as possible. And finally, if you go to this much trouble to build a new ceiling, use a soundproof drywall when you finish, like Quiet Rock instead of the cheapest gypsum at your hardware store. However, remember what I said about stopping the noise at the source. Your neighbor will still make noise on the floor above you. The decoupled ceiling will help to reduce that noise that comes through your ceiling. But that impact noise could still go from their floor into the building frame, even if it doesn't come through your ceiling. It's called flanking noise. You might still hear that toddler running back and forth, maybe in your walls. It might not be as loud as it was before. And even with a new ceiling, it will help if you can persuade your neighbor to put a padded rug on the floor upstairs. I just wanna add one more point about ceilings and floors. You've seen in some other soundproofist videos that I've had good results with quiet rock drywall on my walls, using it with green glue. And this reduces airborne noise and other loud noises that come from outside. But my neighbors aren't pounding directly on my walls all day long like a neighbor is upstairs walking back and forth on their floor. If they were, this green glue quiet rock solution might be not very effective. So that's why I don't recommend green glue and double drywall for floor to ceiling impact noise. It's not going to be as effective because it doesn't dampen the noise at the source and it also doesn't decouple the ceiling from the floor joists. So don't disappoint yourself by adding an extra layer of drywall to your existing ceiling because it won't solve your impact noise problem. There's a lot of information online about how to install floating floors and resilient ceilings and about the materials and construction techniques involved in all of those things and some of this information might match your exact situation. For more information about noise and acoustics, visit soundproofist.com and feel free to share stories with us about your own solutions. Thanks for listening.